Hello, this is going to be a quick development video. So I've done a bunch of videos where I've structured with different steps going through to end up with some end result. Um, and that, I think that's really important to kind of follow along and understand a lot of the theory behind the things. But um, I think sometimes we just want to build something. So this is a new kind of video I'm going to start developing called Quick Development Videos, which essentially is just going to go through building some simple program. And for this video, we're going to build this. Um, it's a simple program that um, allows you to practice simple addition. I made it for my for my son actually. So really quickly the way it works is I can put the answer here and say check and it gives you some verbal feedback. So 5 plus 8 is 12. Oh and that's wrong so it turns red. So 5 plus 8 is 13. And this is great. Um, you can you can hit say because I imagine the person mm -hmm. using this might not be able to read right yet. So I hit so it kind of says an equals, you know, it reads it out for the user. Okay, so with that in mind, let's dive in. So I've made this file here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import tk enter as tk. Um, I just tend to do that because it's how I like to access it. I'm going to use the random module um, because you'll, you might have noticed that when you get it correct, it says different things. And I do that by generating a random number and then making a decision based on the number that's been generated. I'm going to import OS. OS is a module that allows you to run um, simple command line or terminal commands. And the way I actually get this program to talk is if I come here, I just, I just simply run the say command. So say hi, and you can also do say hi like that. So that's, those are the modules I'm going to import. Because I'm not setting this up using proper class and proper object um, class structure, uh, I'm going to set up the two numbers that are going to be added as part of a list. Um, ultimately, it just means that I don't have to pass things around. If I set these up as primitive types, that is just simply if I did something like num1 equals 3 and num2 equals 4, um, we run into some problems trying to access them in the functions. So what I like to do is I'm just going to set them up as a list. Um, and I know that the first element in the list is the first number, and the second element in the list is the second number. So there's a button to press, and I'm going to create a function called run me. I'm not going to put anything in there right now except for running. Um, I created a definition called say, and what that's going to do is that's going to basically says the question. And now what I need to do is I need to set up my window. So we're using tk ender, so I say root equals tk dot tk. That creates my main root. And I'm going to hit enter a bunch of times. I'm going to say root dot main loop. And the main loop, remember, is a function that essentially um, causes the main window to, be, to come up on the screen. And it sits there in a, in a loop waiting for something to happen. These are event-driven programs, meaning that they kind of set themselves up and sit there in an infinite loop waiting for an event. And the event in our case is going to be clicking either, the, either of the buttons. So let's just save this and let's just make sure it's running. So I'm going to say Python 3, GUI, add practice. This is the video file. And there's my window. Nothing's in there yet. That's okay. Okay, so now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a variable called size. I'm going to set it equal to 36. I don't access this variable anywhere inside these functions, so I can make it just a straight up integer. That's fine, but this is going to be the font size. And so by setting it to an integer here, I can easily change it in one spot, and that change will affect everywhere. All right, let's set this thing up. So we're going to say num1 label equals tk.label. So I'm going to construct a label. We're going to put it in the root. Text is going to equal str nums at zero. So I'm basically going to take the first element of nums and put it in there. And the font is going to equal to Helvetica and the size. Let's kind of get a little more space here. There we go. Okay. Now, You'll notice, if I just save this quickly, and actually, let's kind of kill 
Enable this. Quit. Let's run the other version. And you'll notice, opposed to some of my other programs I've made where all the widgets are packed in order, this one we have widgets next to each other. And we use what's called the grid layout to do that. So the grid layout is, is designed such that you can give a row and a column position to each of the widgets and then it will put it in there. So we think about the rows which run this way. So we have three rows in this example. Row one is here, row two is this button, and row three is this button. And then we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five columns. So whenever I, I use the grid geometry manager, I have to give it both a row and a column. And if I want that widget to spread across multiple rows or spread across multiple, multiple columns, I use what's called a row span or a column span. Okay, so, so num1 label.grid. And I'm going to set the row equal to zero and the column equal to zero. So now I'm going to make what's called an operation label equals tk label. Oh, what am I doing here? tk label root text is equal to, and this is the plus symbol essentially. And I'm just going to copy this font here so I don't have to keep typing it. And there we go. That should line up now. Oh, I'm missing a bracket there. That's better. I'm missing a bracket here. That's better. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to say operation label dot grid. And the row for this is still going to be zero, but the column is going to be one. And I can show you that because if you look, this is row zero, column zero, that three there. And so this is in row zero, but column one. Perfect. So let's just save this. Let's just kill this. And can we get the three and the plus? So now we just want to keep adding these elements across. So this is going to be the the next thing we need is we need num2 label equals tka label root text is equal to str nums at one. And again, I'm just going to take that, copy it, and paste it in there. And I'm going to say num2 label dot grid, and I'm going to put it at a row of zero and a column of two. All right, now I need the equal sign, so I'm going to say equal label equals tk.label, and I'm going to say root text is equal to the equal sign. And then, oh, I can just paste that in. There we go. Equal label dot grid, and again, it's going to be row zero, column equals three, because it's going to be next to the second number. And then the last thing I want is I want that entry box. So I'm going to say entry equals tk dot entry um, root. I set the width to two because the way this program is designed that you'll never get more than a two digit response. Uh, and remember the width for an entry box essentially means how many characters fit inside of it. Um, and we'll just paint the font there and entry dot grid. And I'm going to set the row to zero and the column four. Let's see what this looks like, shall we? There we go. So we have three plus four equals, and there's my box. I can put like, you know, seven there, or I can put whatever I want. All right. So now let's add the check button. So the check button, which is going to be the button that you click to check your work, um, is equal TK button root um, the text there is going to equal check. And I like to highlight background, and I'm going to use a hexadecimal code here for the color. So I use 3E4149. That tends to be a popular one I use lately. And I'm going to bind it to the function run me. So essentially what we do is when we build a button, we can bind the button to a function, meaning that when it's clicked, it runs the function. And then I'm going to say check button dot grid. Now, 
I want to put it in row 0. No, nope, I want to put it in row 1. And I'm just going to put it now for column 0, column zero, just to show you what happens. So let me save this. Let's run this. And there's our button there. You see right here. Here's our button. But I want this button to spread across this entire, entire row here, meaning I want to span more than one column. So I have one, two, three, four, five columns to span. So what I can do is I come back here and I write column span equals five. And what that does is it forces the button to spread out about across these five columns, which effectively centers it. But I don't want it centered. I want it to use all of that space. So we use the command sticky equals north, east, south, west. So this is a shorthand to say I want you to take this and in the columns that I've assigned it, in the row that I've assigned it, I want you to take I want you to take the edges and stick them to the top, right, bottom, left of the screen. That's how we think of northeast, southwest. So if I save this now. And I let's give this a run again. There's a nice check button. And I click and it runs the run me, which is nice. Alright, let's clear that. Alright, let's add our second button. So our second button is our speak button. And that's gonna be tk.button root text equals. And I'm gonna put save highlight back round. And we're gonna set it to the same thing. 3e4. One four nine, and the command is going to be say, and then I'm going to say speak button dot grid, and I'm going to set it to the row below. So it's, we're at row two now, and the column is zero, and the column span is five, and sticky is northeast southwest. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Now, see how that font's a little smaller? Let's get that font to be the same size. I'm just going to take this font piece here, I'm going to put comma, paste that, comma, paste that. Now we have a nice, a little bit bigger font, which is a bit nicer. Okay. Now we got to give it some functioning. Oh, let's just make sure both the buttons work. So I click running, save the question. All right, let's start with save the question. So again, it's bound to the function say. So I'm going to come up to this function up here. There's my function say. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to string construct a statement. What I mean by that is I'm going to make a string and I'm going to call it statement. And I'm simply going to take, I'm going to cast the first num. So nums at zero, remember is our first value, plus and then we want it to actually say the word plus, plus, and then dumbs at one, plus. And then I have to say equal, and then I say the word what. So what we've done is we've built this string, which takes the first element in dumbs, which is three, then the plus sign, then the second element in dumbs, which is four, and then equals what. And now I want to use the say command, which is a terminal command, to say that. So what I do is I say os.system. So we use the os module. We use the function inside there called system. And we simply pass the string that we want to run. So we say say plus statement. So let's save this. And let's run it. So now when I click this, it should say 3 plus 4 equals what? Oh, I get an error. What's my error? Let's take a look. It's doing so well. I have no errors here. Now I have one. Oh, I forgot an S on nums. There we go. Let's try this again. Clear. Oh, the program still runs. So let's quit the program. Let's see, are we right? There we go. Perfect. Now, it's good to note that this is only going to work in, in a Mac because we're using a terminal command, but 
you know, if you're building a prototype, it's not really too much of a stretch to then kind of translate this to other platforms. All right, let's actually do the math now, because right now if I put a number in here, it doesn't check it. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a simple if statement. I'm going to say if, well, let's do this actually. Let's say the result is equal to, and we're going to say int entry.get. So what am I doing here? is I'm accessing whatever the user has put inside the entry box, get it, and then I cast it to an int. Because remember, when we access it, it accesses it as a string. So then I say if, and I say result is equivalent to nums at 0 plus nums at 1. Let's make sure we put nums. We did. Well, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is we're going to set... Well, we'll do a couple things. I'm just going to print to the console for now correct. That's just to help us see. So I'm going to generate a new random number because we have to generate two new numbers to add. So nums is equal to random dot rand int 0 comma 10. And nums at 1 is rand int 0 10. So essentially, the first thing I do is I generate two new numbers to display for the next question. Perfect. Okay. Now, let's update. Let's update the actual display. So I'm going to say num one label dot. I'm going to config. This is a general function that actually allows us to change some of the states or the, the look of that specific widget, which is a label, and I'm going to set the text to nums at zero. So I generate a new number, and I update the display. nums2 label, or num2 label, dot config, text equals nums at one. And then we want to do entry dot delete, and we're going to delete everything inside the entry from zero to tk dot end. And this is just a short way of saying take the first character inside the entry box and delete everything to the end. So this is a reserved, saved constant inside the TK module. All right. Now I want to give some you know, positive feedback to the user. So what I do is I generate a rand, a rand, rand num, so a random number. And I'm going to say random from dot rand int 0 to 4. So I generate a random number from 0 to 4, and I write this if statement. If rand num is equivalent to 0, well, os.system, I'm going to say, good job. Elif rand num is equivalent to 1. Oops, let's clean up that syntax a little bit. Let's just be consistent here. You don't need the brackets, but I just tend to do them. I do a lot of programming in Java. And I'm going to say, what am I going to say? Great work. And then I'm going to say elif random, or oh, should we rand num? Rand num. Just to two. OS.system. Say spectacular. And then else, I'm going to say os.system, and I'm going to say keep going. OK, so let's just take a look and see what happens. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Good job. Good job. 3 plus 9 is 12. Spectacular. Spectacular. 4 plus 6 is 10. Spectacular. Awesome. Let's put in the bad number. Wrong answer. 7 plus 8 is 9. Oh. So now what we have to do is we have to deal with when the person gets it wrong. Um, and what I want to do is essentially remove the number, make this box red. Um, and so what we do is you see this if statement up here? We're going to put an else at the bottom. Oh, I'm almost at 20 minutes. OK, so I'm going to else. I'm going to print. I'm going to print error to the screen. I'm going to say entry.delete because I want to delete it. I'm going to say 0 to tk.end and then entry. 
Config. And I'm going to set the background color to red. So now, oh, where'd it go? Let's put that. So now if I put 3 plus 4 is 8, and I hit check, it turns red. 3 plus 4 is 7. But notice now, it it doesn't turn white again. So to solve this problem, let's just clear that up. We're going to come up here, and every time I get it correct, I'm going to say entry dot config background is white, and that is it. So if I put seven check. Good. Well, 6 plus 0 is obviously 7. Oh, it's wrong. So 6 plus 0, it's now red. I know I got it wrong. So I put 6 and I say check. Awesome. And there we are. So this was just, you know, a, a really quick minimal viable product. This obviously has a lot of room for an improvement. We could, um, you know, a number of things. We could make it just respond to the return key. We could add some sort of tracking mechanism. We could store the answers. Um, lots of things. So try and add some features yourself. Um, this code is available on my GitHub site. Um, you can just look me up, pmiscu on GitHub, um, and you're welcome to access anything I have on there. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a great day.